Oh, and he's showing oh, straight red red hard for Maxime Crapo. It goes pear shaped in a hurry. Welcome to Instant Replay for MLS Match Day 9. I'm your host, Andrew Weeby, and as always, we're taking a closer look at the most controversial refereeing decisions in Major League Soccer. Before we get to the plays, a big thank you to every single person who sends me nominations on social media. We could not do this show without you. Let's start in Portland. Two plays to look at. The first play, just at the beginning of the second half in the 47th minute. Maxime Crepeau, the former LAFC goalkeeper, is in a tough situation with Denny Bawanga. 1v1, top of the box, that's not where a goalkeeper wants to be. And yes, folks, you see the contact. That's a foul on Crepeau. And because Bawanga is alone on goal and would have had a shooting opportunity in an empty net, Rubiel Vasquez is going to the back pocket. Red card. Denial of an obvious goal scoring opportunity. And for me, this is bang on the correct call. If not for the foul by Crepeau, Bawanga is going to be shooting on an open net. Well done to the referee on this one. Now, to the 96th minute for a call that changed the game. 2 2, LAFC pushing. Numbers in the box. And a loose ball falls to the feet of Nathan Ordaz, LAFC forward. Kamal Miller, Portland center back, is defending trying desperately to clear the ball. Miller does not get clean contact, the ball isn't cleared, and Timothy Tillman rifles it into the back of the net. Game winner, right? Wrong. Foul is the call by Vasquez on Ordaz, and I don't see it. Yes, there's a ton of contact on this play, but it's between both Ordaz and Miller. Look at Miller's right arm pulling Ordaz back. Is there jostling? Do the players come together? Yes, but that doesn't mean it's a foul on Ordaz in my opinion. I would have liked to see no call in the goal stand on this play. To Atlanta we go, a big match on Sunday in the Eastern Conference. It's 2-2 in the 79th minute and Philly are building. They're finding Mikel Ua in the box and Ua's doing what he does, scoring potentially the game winning goal, only no goal. Catherine Nesbitt, the AR, raises her flag, and this goal is offside according to the refereeing crew. Now, Philly fans, you jumped in my mentions on Twitter and you were furious, and I can understand why. This looks like it definitely could be onside. It also looks like it could be offside. It's one of those calls that can go either way, and we really need math to know for sure. The expectation for many was that the flag would stay down from Nesbitt, and I understand that thought. For me, that would be if Catherine Nesbitt is unsure whether or not this is onside or offside. In that case, keep the flag down and let VAR do their thing. But if Nesbitt, with the one angle that none of us have, not on the broadcast, not anywhere else, looks down the line and says offside, she has to raise her flag in that moment. The trouble is, there's not clear and obvious evidence for the VAR, Jose Carlos Rivero, to then overturn the call. So the call on the field is going to stand. I know you want me on this show to have some flaming hot take, but I wasn't looking down the line and I honestly can't tell you whether this goal is onside or off. So as it stands, I think it might be onside, but I really can't tell you for sure. To San Jose we go, Colorado in town. Eight minutes in, speaking of goalkeepers against their former clubs, William Yarbrough's in net for the Quakes. Navajo gets on the ball in the box to Colorado number nine, and he's going down. Folks, this is a clear penalty kick, even though the contact is, in my opinion, pretty slight. Watch closely right here from the angle behind the end line. Yeah, there it is. Yarbrough slides into the foot of Navajo. Blake Badawi is absolutely right to point to the spot. Penalty. To Charlotte we go. Two calls here, the first in the 55th minute. The boys in the Queen City eventually got the win 3-2. It's a set-piece routine. Bill Tuiloma is going to come in and set a pick on Davy Flores. You can see it right there in the middle of your screen. Liel Abada makes the run, gets the ball, hits it off the post, and eventually scores. But no goal. Foul is the call by referee Alan Chapman. And I don't like the call. Yes, there is contact on this play from Tuiloma. Yes, he might have grabbed a little bit. Watch the left arm across the chest. But Davy Flores is not recognizing the moment. He's not trying to track Abada. He's not involved in the play at all. And if we call this sort of contact on a set piece, you might as well not take any set piece. Just give the ball to the defending team. This happens every single play. For me, while I understand Chapman could look at this and say, I see a hold, that's a foul. I would like this not to be called. I think the goal should have stood. Final seconds of this one, Chapman with the correct call. Second yellow card for Kevin Long. He is sent off. This is an easy one. Watch. Long grabs Patrick Ajiman and takes him down. Now it's not a dog so red because the ball is out of Ajiman's reach. He's not going to recover this. 
He does not have control of the ball. Well done to Chapman to get that one right late on. And well done to Carol Ann Chouinard, the VAR, and the New York City FC New England Revolution match. 41st minute, Ian Harks gets a straight red card from referee Pierre-Luc Lazier. But as you watch this, you can see this is not serious foul play. I don't really see the level of force that I would call excessive from Harks. And that contact on the top of the foot, not sure that's endangering the safety of the opponent. Chouinard flags Lazier, he goes to the monitor. Red card is reversed to yellow, and all is well. Well done to the crew on this one. And well done to Michael Radchuk, the VAR in the Red Bullish Fire game. Andres Reyes in the 39th minute just loses his mind. Before the ball is played on a free kick, up goes the arm into the face of his opponent with force Anytime you do that. When the force is not negligible and you contact the face of your opponent off the ball, that is violent conduct. This is clear and obvious. And I give credit to the VAR for being spot on in this situation. Now, you might be wondering, why is this not a penalty kick? Why is the free kick retaken from the same spot? Well, in Law 12, fourth point, you can see right at the very top, if the ball is not in play, if it is not live, if the ball is out of play, play is restarted according to the previous decision, which would be the free kick decision. So the more you know, next time you'll have a good idea what's going on. And with that, we're out of here for match day nine. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sending plays. And thank you to Phil Lavanco for taking the day off. You deserve it, man. I hope you enjoyed that Scotty Scheffler win. And an even bigger thank you to our producer and editor extraordinaire on this one, Rich Hernandez. You're always working when everybody else is sleeping, Rich. With that, I'm Andrew Weeby, and as always, we'll see you next time.